In this episode, Kate and David discuss the three golden goddesses. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. Was that very dramatic? You know what it sounded like? It sounded like you went from Navi to Fi or to Fi. Oh. You were like, hello. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. Like, <laughs> there oh, is computer. a 99% probability that we are starting another episode of another Zelda podcast. So did you ever feel that Fi sounded a little bit like Flood to you? Flood from Super Mario Sunshine? There's like this. I never played Super Mario Sunshine. I'm a bad GameCube owner. <laughs> I didn't. That's like the one game that I didn't have like the, you know, the game yeah. that came with it or you know the, the game that was meant to start it all off one that could be the flagship well super yeah. mario sunshine came out a, a year or two after the gamecube came out in fact really? luigi's the flagship? oh luigi's, luigi's mansion. mansion was the big I did one play that one okay. and that was because this that was the best they had uh when the that's gamecube came out best they had. mario sunshine was a few years later and it has its ups and downs but it's it should be played oh okay so you know so I can't Welcome to the question. Super Mario. Welcome to another Mario podcast. <laughs> Welcome to another tangent that we like to go on at the start of every episode. Oh, fair enough. So yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are going to be... So this episode came about as a like a listener feedback and suggestion. We are... It kind of was, Kate Fisher. Yeah. I mean, we're absolutely open to suggestions because we have a list of ideas, but there is stuff we have not thought about yet. So please let us know if you do have mm-hmm. suggestions for future episodes. And this one was a suggestion. Was Loosely. To, yeah. I'm sorry. To kind I'm of sorry. go into... Uh, Out I of think respect... It was- to Celeste Roberts, who recommended this, yeah. I'm going to say loosely because maybe we'll take a deeper dive another time. But anyway, yeah, I think she mentioned the mythology or something yeah. like that. So we That's are going to take some time to study up. Yeah, this episode specifically is uh, going to be discussing the uh, golden goddesses or mm. the goddesses, the three goddesses, um, Din, Nehru, and Ferore. I think maybe I've Ferore, always said Ferore. I put that e as silent. However Ferore. you want to say it, there is trust me, it's up for interpretation. But that is going to be our topic today, which, as you said, um, came from Celeste. Celeste Roberts. Yes. No, actually, well, thank you for that. She, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like just grabbing it from you here. I apologize. But I have a, a couple messages from her. Yes. She sent us a message on Facebook, uh, oh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And uh, she said, I just discovered your podcast through Google Play, and I love your content. I'm excited to listen to more. So I just reached out real quick and said, oh, cool, thanks. Uh, I don't know, on a whim, for some reason, I was just like, any idea for show topics? Yeah. And she said this, and maybe some of these would be awesome. Um, She said, I'm very pleased with the ones I have listened to so far, especially Link's loves, since I used to ship, in quotes, them as a child. (laughs) I thought that was pretty funny, actually. Um, what about, and she had a couple of different ideas here, The Sound of Silence, Link's Voice, or Breath of the World, Breath of the World, Folklore and Fairy Tales from Around the World in mm-hmm. Zelda, mm-hmm. Um, The Poetry of Puzzles, Wordplay in Zelda, like Sheik's Song, stuff like that. And then she also said, um, music in the games and listening uh, listening to your favorite pieces, maybe even the order of the games, the best music. I didn't... Uh, read that in order but uh so, so her one of breath of the world folklore and fairy tales from around the world uh the, you know ideas like talking about the three goddesses or the naming of all the different princesses or the different races mm-hmm. i got back to her and i said wow these are all really great ideas yeah. they're they're deep dives and i would be have a lot of fun exploring some of them i did not say that to her i'm just saying it now on the show and i did mention we're planning an, a music episode i'm Absolutely. hoping you have to you, you just have to talk a little about behind the, the curtain here but i'm hoping that we get a special guest on for our season one finale and that could be an episode all about music cool and so that would be episode 120 or you know season one episode 20 and so i let her know about that in any way so she said she's enjoying the show and blah 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 and that's really cool so since then i have two more celeste robert comments if i if i may um, and so, uh, Celeste, thank you so much for reaching out to us. She yeah. just threw a comment on our Instagram post the other day where I was uh, playing on Memorial Day weekend where I was playing a little bit of A Link to the Past. She said, oh, that was a fun Zelda game. I rented it. That was my first Zelda game. I rented it from Movie Gallery, a Friday night tradition when I was a kid and loved the exploration. Glad you guys had fun. And last but not least, uh, just just as our Wind Waker episode came out, <laughs> Celeste also commented on um on the wind waker episode and she said uh, on a comment in our facebook feed she said hearing about your nieces freaking out 
and quitting Wind Waker because of the little snot-nosed kid on Outset <laughs> oh, Island kid. made my day. That was so cute and funny. <laughs> and that was really, really, that was really great. So Celeste, thank you for all of the feedback. And what we're going to do our best to... It, your topics were just fantastic, and we decided to break that down a little bit, and we're going to at least try to talk about the three goddesses today mm-hmm. and their kind of journey through the lore and all of that. Yeah, they are involved in many games in many kind of different ways. Sometimes cameos, sometimes very important. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I've really always liked their involvement in that I, I've always been kind of interested in mythology and those kinds of stories. So when I saw that that part of uh, Ocarina of Time, that was just always really cool. I still enjoy watching that cutscene. For example, the the one where the Deku tree tells about the yes. creation and the yes. three Oscars it, come down. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, the three Academy Awards descend from the sky. <laughs> and... Um, I just always really like that part. It helps really ground the story. I with thought it was cool. The origin of it all and why Link is there and why Link is doing what he's doing and why the characters act the way they act. And it just all ties it together. And so I think they're absolutely important and I think they're super interesting. And we're just going to talk about them today a little bit. Specifically Din, Nehru, and Faror. Yes. Oh, yeah, we said that already. Yeah. So um, going back to Ocarina of Time and their whole story, just to refresh you guys' this memory, or if you haven't played a ton before, or if you haven't played Ocarina, because this is really where you get the... Let's absolutely discuss how story. they're... Re- let's discuss that cutscene, because that is the first time um, in release order that we have any kind of... There might have been some talk of goddesses in Link to the Past, actually maybe just sages but this is like a first time we full see. story like an origin story so um so deku tree's coughing and hacking i'm joking I'm yep sorry. <laughs> he's <laughs> poor deku tree i'm about to go but before it happens let me tell you about a thing let me tell this really long story to you <laughs> with the last of my energy it's fine that's a priority so so the three academy awards descend from chaos right to create the world we see green, red, and blue colored, uh, you know, beans or whatever. Yeah. Yes. So um, we have Din, who creates the material realm itself. Um, and then and then I think, yeah, and then the landscape as well. So all the, the mountains yeah, and does, the, yeah, yeah, sorry, the, sorry. the valleys and whatnot. And then we have uh, Nehru, who comes down and creates the law and order, the laws that govern oh, the land. Interesting. And I, then Farora huh. comes down and creates the life, the life. form. So mm-hmm. not only the creatures, but also the vegetation. Which is represented by white things floating in the air. Sure. In that cutscene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> it was kind of funny because the cutscene's like, and she brought all the life to the land. Which and are it, fireflies. Yeah, fireflies. That's it. <laughs> or dandelions. Not, not like a deer seeds. running through. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> They were limited, David. Oh, I know. I'm not. I know. I'm just kind of joking around a little. <laughs> um, and so they created the world and what they left behind was the Triforce, which were their essences, the essences of the goddesses. So there are three parts to the Triforce. Yep. That makes sense. Try. Mm. <laughs> force. Yeah. Um, well, the um, original Triforce in The Legend of Zelda, I think, was the Triforce because it was a triangle and it's just three That sides, also makes sense. But I much prefer three triangles. I think that's nice. Sure. If three of all the things. That's like the theme of any good story is three. Yep. Th- or seven, but usually three. <laughs> so... <laughs> Seven's a, a magical number, isn't oh, it? Oh man, I'd love to see a seven act movie. That thing would go maybe maybe like Ben Hur or something. I don't know. Maybe that's a seven act film. Anyway, Lord of the Rings is Minority like Park gets act. close with five acts. Anyway, <laughs> so so they leave behind the Triforce, um, which are pieces of themselves. So um, Din is the goddess of power, so she leaves behind the Triforce of power. Uh huh. We have Nehru, who is the goddess of wisdom, so she has the Triforce of wisdom, and then Feror, or Ferori, or however you want to say that, is the goddess of courage, so she yes. would have the Triforce of oh, wait, oh, courage. Wait, let's compare them to, let's line them up with what they were in the cutscene. So the life, it's the law and order, life, and the land, basically, right? Yes, yes. And so I'm losing track a little bit. So Din is the land. And what is she? Power. Land and power, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nehru is the law and order, and she's wisdom. 
So okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And then furor is courage and life forms. Okay. Okay. So sometimes, so what I found when I was going back and researching all of these and the topic for today is that sometimes they're the things that they're associated with make sense. And sometimes it's kind of a stretch. Ooh, kind of, interesting. Kind of sometimes stretch. it's maybe just someone wanting to do a cameo or something or use the same name or, or they just inspired by maybe they had an idea for something like, um, Nehru's love, for example, which we can get into and I'm, we can Ooh. talk about each goddess and Ooh. like their involvement. I'd love that. That's I don't know what like you're talking about right now. In Ocarina of Time, the, the Nehru's, love. Nehru's love doesn't really, I mean, if she's the goddess of wisdom, why is there love? It's like a shield, basically. When um, does that happen in Ocarina? I feel Prevents damage. Right it's now. one of the things granted to you by one of the great fairies. Oh, it's one of the. It's one of the. It's an item, or it's like one of the item skills, power. or whatever. Yeah, right? oh. and it's her love, which you're like. Mm, Interesting. Does that make sense if she's like law and order wisdom? Lo-? So Mary's sometimes it's, I enough. feel like it's kind of a stretch. Fair enough. But is, is the fire one in Ocarina of Time Din? Yes, that one makes more sense. And then Feror, so Nehru's blue, Feror is green, and Din is red red mm-hmm. and those are the three colors mm-hmm. of those special features you get in ocarina yes okay okay yep. Yep. thank thank you for helping me remember oh sure I, yeah i had to trust me i had to go back and remember <laughs> all these myself so uh they give the triforce to the goddess do you hylia or hylia how, how do you pronounce it because there's a lot of debate on the internet about yes. this yeah i know i the best i can come up with is that i think like in skyward sword it's hylia and then hot hi, like Hyrule doesn't really start until Minish Cap in the timeline. Mm-hmm. And even then it's just called Hyrule Town. And so I think Hylia predates Hyrule. That's my understanding. And I could be very wrong about There's that. There's like, it seems a 50-50 split on mm-hmm. the interwebs. Because sometimes I look up how, you know, how in the world do I pronounce these things? I also think that Hylians come from Hyrule. See, and I would say Hylia. So now we have to battle to the death. A Hylian? Mm-hmm. Hyrulean. Mm-hmm. All right, bring, I see it all. Bring down the cage I, I and the see, swords. Yup, I'm right. You roll. No, I we mean, got to track can, that. We got to get to the bottom of that. Not right now, but it, people say it both ways. I, I don't think it's that big. Of Hylia, game. Hylia. But they give it. They give the Triforce to the goddess, of which we do not uh, name, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe and we'll the, really the, the place the place where they leave the triforce becomes these the sacred realm which yeah. we will that will be a large yeah. part of the mythology as well and i didn't want to get too far into that whole area and place as well but that's what it becomes um in terms of a twilight princess the goddess is also a point for light spirits um which are the ones you encounter and you have to collect the tears for so that's oh yeah ordana Farron, eldon and Lanayru to protect the four regions which are named the, the same or very similar yeah to that um they have also the goddesses are involved in different ways. Sometimes they get directly involved. Sometimes they kind of intervene. It's weird because they they create the world and they kind of always want to protect it, but they don't. It, sometimes they could have done more yeah. to do so, but they kind of let. Well, isn't that Link kind of like the uh, in any story that involves yeah, a let, god or something? There's that kind of conflict or that you know right? How much power and force do they exert, and and how much influence do mm-hmm. they? Do they exert? Yeah. So, um, like when you're looking, when you, when you're a child and you have an ant farm, do you care about the ant farm as a whole? Yes. If, if an ant, if you find an ant that is dead, would you like start that whole ant farm all over just for that one ant? You know, I, I don't know. This yeah. is not a great example, but <laughs> maybe gods just look. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right. All right. Um, and there are so, uh, again with, um, Twilight Princess. So, it's those, so they appoint the four light spirits and then there's the interloper war kind of well, you gotta tell me about storyline. So do you remember the creepy cutscene in Twilight Princess? Um, where, so they banish the dark interlopers. You because, are not remembering Okay. This. So the interlopers who are like the creepy dark links in the okay, cutscene yeah. are trying to get the Triforce, take the power for themselves, do whatever they want in the world. So the goddesses come, and in this case, they're like directly involved, and they banish them to the Twilight Realm, and they forbid them from returning. But for some reason, in this very convenient plot hole, they leave the mirror of Twilight as like a gateway between the Twilight Realm. <laughs> because why would you do that? If you're banishing 
Hey guys, sh- the door. Should I, guys. should I close it and lock it? Eh, maybe just close no, it. No, just close it and like <laughs> they can they can come through we'll again fine. if they want. But no, we'll just like watch it. It's fine. But they don't. But yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of not the neatest, you know, uh, storyline ever. But so they're directly involved that way. They leave the mirror of twilight as a link between worlds. Whoa, dang. <laughs> is that are they also present in that game in that way then? Or is that different? Uh just in Twilight Princess? I'm sorry, no, in a link between worlds. Oh, I we don't know. That I don't know. Right. That I don't know. I just wanted to make the joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, that's cool. Um and then so they're also responsible for cre- uh, uh appointing a hero whenever um, and this is in Twilight. Ganon just kind of in in general. In general. So they're the ones that get to oh, appoint wow. the hero when Ganon comes to power. They're like, okay, time to act. We have to protect the world that we created once again. So we are going to choose our our hero. Say, do do the three goddesses in Ocarina? I'm like literally learning stuff right now. I guess I must <laughs> skip over some of these cutscenes. Apparently, I don't. I'm not a skip cutscene skipper per se, but sure. I don't know. Some of this is not retain. I'm not retaining. Um, do they in Ocarina? After this, they're they're there. They're present in that cutscene, which is a flashback. Mm-hmm. Are they ever present, like at the end or in the sacred realm or anything? I don't really know if we ever really mm-hmm. see them again. I don't know. I want to say there. I guess you just get those three powers. I, I want to say there's some kind of call back at the very very end of Ocarina, like just a color maybe, or you know a. Yeah, but I, they're not like. I feel like I kind of remember some streaks in, of flying yeah, colors yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 something might, like that. Yeah, but not like directly. Like they're okay. they're, they're flying through the sky, going hooray! They are, I, to best of my ability to remember, they are not represented in Majora's Mask at all. Majora's Mask is in Termania, and okay. it has these funky, tall gods that are very strange. Mm. Ooh, ooh, you got to see pictures. Yeah. Oh, uh oh, cat's playing with the jingle toy. Excellent. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, Milo just wanted to make sure that was okay. Yes, you uh-huh. may play with Jingle Toy. So, yeah, okay. So, Ocarina, okay, fine. They're there. But in, in Twilight, or in, in general, they protect the land and then they... they uh, they're kind of more directly involved in Twilight, Princess. And I can't believe that I'm not remembering that very well. Kind of, sort of. Um, and then they also are obviously have... Are the reason that Wind Waker comes about, basically. Because they there's the Great Flood. Aren't they responsible for that? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> what is it? It was Ferrore or the one who does land and water. It was just like, well, let's crank up that water dial. Yep. <laughs> yes, reset this situation. Everybody, watch out! So, um, no, 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 cut it out. We don't have enough water to cover Death Mountain. It'll be fine. A dragon will live there. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, basically, what happened with Wind Waker? What caused Wind Waker was that there was no hero, and they're like, uh oh, there's yeah. no hero. Um, the hero's gone in his own little his own timeline or whatever. So we need to protect the world well how do we do that okay um let's flood it let's freeze it um let's let's get biblical again maybe and yeah. uh and flood the world so they tell everyone to go to the mountain tops hmm. and then they flood oh so they actively told said to do that yep huh? they That's wanted cool. to well they they always have to protect you know the, the innocence and whatnot so yeah they told everyone go to the mountains um yep. And the mountains just became islands, and mountain tops became islands, and so they were involved. And there the Zoras well. are like, "Well, we swim in water. There's a heck of a lot of water. Quick, let's learn how to fly." Makes sense. <laughs> sure, makes yeah, sense. As you There's do, be water everywhere. As you do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how those were my notes in terms of how, like, in general, all three were. That's cool. As a whole, involved with the different games i heard they're not involved in breath of the wild are they i don't know they have a cameo in minish cap but let's speak to that after break let's go to break right now real okay. quick and then we can discuss uh some a little bit more details we'll about do that and then situation. yeah we'll get into each one specifically Ooh, mm-hmm. i like it i like it All as right. i've said in the past i like it when it's these episodes that i just where i learned something I learned something it. in our last one when you kind of went into the whole development of Fair enough. the first one. So it's now it's my turn. Now it's your turn. Super cool. Okay, I'll see you in a minute or so. Oh, cool. I, actually, I think you're supposed to do that because you're oh, hosting. But I will see you in a minute or so. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Hey everyone, David Geisler here, and I am very excited to share that we have just launched our Patreon page for another Zelda podcast. 
Patreon is a great way for creators to grow their content, and we're really looking forward to using this space as a way to say thank you to our listeners. We'd love to have your support, and we've put together some rewards that we're pretty excited about. Things like additional uncut bonus content, custom wallpapers, and of course, early access to all of our episodes. So if you'd like, after the show, head on over to our page at patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find a link to the page in our show notes. Thank you very much. All right, we are back, and I think it's time to get into a little more detail. But before we do, sure. you were going to mention Ooh. Minish Cap, I think, and how they're involved with... Oh, well, they have a cameo. They have a, oh. like a, there's, there's three, there's a green, blue, and red character in Hyrule Town uh, okay. in the Minish Cap, and they just introduce themselves as who they are, Din, Faror, and Nehru, I believe, and they don't do anything else. Like, they're just like, oh, we're from, we're in town, from out of town. Oh, okay. Just looking around. Maybe they don't even have names, but they're clearly... I can't quite remember now, Sure, but they don't do anything else. I kept thinking that they were seeds planted for like later in the game to pop up, but I think they're just a cameo. And they aren't. <laughs> and, but, but at the same time, maybe there is some canon there, some timeline canon, because Skyward Sword does not speak about the three goddesses very much, I don't believe, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it does? They're in there. So what about this goddess of Hylia, which Zelda kind of is and becomes in yeah, Skyward Sword? Yeah, Zelda is the human version of... Of the three? Of Hylia. Of Hylia, right. Yeah. Which is not one of the three goddesses. No, she's uh, she's a whole separate being. So she's who the goddesses entrust with the Triforce initially. So the goddesses are above her. So they, yeah, they're kind of choosing her to take care of the Triforce while they zoom back cool. up to... Space. Zoom back up to <laughs> outer space. Okay, okay, I like Which, that. I get why that. Why would they want to like live in the world they create, uh, even like in disguise or something? If they well, maybe that's what this happens in Minish Cap a little bit. They're just town yeah, inhabitants. Maybe they do dip down in here and there. There you go. Interesting. So that was actually yeah, I missed that because I have like different examples of the games that they are. They do pop up in for yeah. the three, but I did not have that one. So that's I cool. Well, I'm happy to have learned about the Skyward Sword thing a little more because I was starting to think like, oh, maybe Minish Cap is the introduction of them and then they become goddesses, but that doesn't line up at all. I like what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we can start off with Din, which, okay, so funny story <laughs> about how dumb I am. Cool. Uh, yeah, always fun to talk about. Uh, so obviously the names of the goddesses correspond with like the regions, Faron, Elden, and Lanayru, uh-huh. but it took me so long for the light bulb to go on that Din was part of Elden. So, I mean, honestly, I didn't really realize it until just a second ago when you said Which, their names, Din yeah, and Elden. Yeah, I'm like, uh, because obviously Nehru and Lanehru, okay, that's yeah. the whole, fine, okay. Um, Farron and Faror, uh, that's a little different, but okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Din and Elden, for some reason, my brain could not compute I think it's that whole, it's how kind that of, made sense. It's on the second syllable or whatever. I get it, I get it. Yeah, I don't know. I see I'm it now. So... Obviously, Din and Elden, the fire kind of element to mm-hmm. it. Red is the color, the theme. Um, so Din, once again, created the earth and the landscape. And so in Ocarina of Time, we have Din's fire, which we kind of mentioned before, right. which I used all the time. All That's the time. Basically, the last time I played through, it was like the only way I could defeat Dark Link. Um, oh, <laughs> it was just maybe. burning him to death. I never tried that. <laughs> yeah, That's I was smart. Like, you have to he, load up on magic, though, I'm sure. Yeah, but he kept kicking my butt and like <laughs> mirroring all my moves or of predicting course. all my moves. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to set him on fire. Um, Din's fire is like the, is to, Ocarina's Din fire is Breath of the Wild's remote bomb. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, and ah, use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I use that constantly. That was my favorite one to use. Um, then when we get to Wind Waker, we have Din's pearl which you get um, after defeating the Dragon Roost Island right. fire kind of related yeah. thing. Um, so that was cool. It was a little nod to that. And then obviously they have the the goddess statue that you have to place the pearl in in Wind Waker. Yes. Um, and then there's the story about how they created the... Flood, like we talked about earlier, so they're pretty heavily involved in. Wind oh gosh, Waker. you're right. They're actually they have statues and everything in Wind Waker. I can't yeah. believe I forgot that. Yeah, right. So, um, pretty big part there. Um, so Skyward Sword, where they come into that is, um, Link has to learn those songs. 
Right. And so there is a, din, a song for Din and there's a song for each goddess. Okay. And so the song, he has to learn the song. And then he obtains Din's flame, which then enhances and powers up your sword. That's where they come in to sky word sword. So basically <laughs> that is the one that gives the power to repel evil to the sword. And that's like the last one you get. So then your sword is like fully ready to kick butt. Oh yeah. That's that moment where it's like, Hey, you're ready, but you're not ready. Gotta go get a better sword. And then you get that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to do that three separate times because of course you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, they're kind of in more indirectly involved with, with skyward sword. So that's, where Din comes in. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. And then I learned because I had not played Oracle of Any of anything. Them? <laughs> or- <laughs> Oracle Have you of played anything? Oracle of anything? No. So uh, Din is the Oracle of Seasons, it turns out. Din is the Oracle of Seasons. Yeah, that I might. Isn't it, but is the Oracle. Yeah, and I think. Lanaru or something something with an L. Oh no, maybe it's Nairu. Okay, yeah, ages might be different, but Din. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, correct. So, so Din is the Oracle of Seasons and. From what I read, because again, I didn't play it, um, Din has started. to be saved by mm-hmm. Link after she's yeah. abducted. Vadi takes her. So, yes. So they seem kind of more humanoid in those games where they can, because obviously a oh, goddess yeah, like would Minish not be Cat. able to be abducted. So if we're going into lore here, maybe we could yeah. deduce that they uh, they can come in as human you know, maybe they're not like fully transported and become a human form. This is getting a little like weird, but maybe they can have es- parts of their essence be represented as a human on the in the in the corporal world, so to speak. You I mean, know? if they can have parts of their essence as an object, like right. the Triforce, why not? Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm I'm positing that the Din in Oracle of Ages isn't all of Din, but a a, a version or a representation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. if. If the Din in Oracle of Ages were to be killed or something, and I'm surmising that maybe Din, the spirit, would still exist, but maybe that's just a physical. Right. I don't know. I'm really kind of like making this up as I go here, but why not? Seems right. Why not? I'm trying to rationalize how they can have these uh, more realistic uh, physical forms. Mm -hmm. But you're right. If they can also be an object or be represented inside an object and have the same power, unless those unless those pearls in Wind Waker are almost like keys and they create a conduit. And then the goddesses can communicate, but I don't kinda, know. Well, kind of because once you put all those pearls in the statues, the Tower of the Gods comes about. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe kind of, mm. maybe kind of, sort of. I would also, like I mentioned in our Goron episode um, a while ago, I said I would play a spinoff game of the Gorons. I'd play yeah. a goddess game too, because <laughs> yeah. there's, I think they're cool and interesting. And I do like that they keep popping up. And I kind of, I wish there was more of them to Breath of the Wild, maybe. Yeah, we should get into that when we can. I think there's maybe references at best. Yeah. I don't recall any kind of big major thing or even them being really part of the story. So no, wait, in Twilight Princess, there's the four light goddesses. Spirits, spirits light spirits. Mm-hmm. And they are not directly related, but they have like names that feel the same. You yes. Know, there's, but they're not exactly. Farron, Elden, Lanayru, yeah. Yeah, right? And so then they're just represented. Oh, man, I'm having a hard time making this connection here. <laughs> Those light spirits, in your opinion, how are they connected to the goddesses? The goddesses appointed them. They're kind of like the, okay. the protectors. Since the goddesses couldn't protect the place themselves, they they you know appointed these spirits to then watch over okay, that's each cool. land. So they're kind of the emissaries, if you I will. I like it. I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, right. Uh, Skyward Sword also, I almost forgot, has the silent realm too. Din's silent realm. Um, you know, do you remember in the Skyward silent, Sword? Yeah, well, it's just when you're realms. collecting all the little glowing beads and stuff. That's different. That's yeah, different. Uh, you're collecting. Oh God, what are you collecting? Well, there's that crazy. Oh, I'm thinking of Twilight Princess when you, you are, collect but the you bugs still have that go to... on the grapes or whatever. Yes, <laughs> I hate those quests. I, hate them. I think a lot of people don't love them. <laughs> the Silent Realm was one where you did also have to collect things, but you also couldn't be seen by like any of the enemies, yes. or your life was over. And yes. that probably. Out of anything that I've played in the Legend of Zelda franchise was the thing that gave me the most anxiety. I think they were trying to kind of harken back to the, you know, Zelda always does like to throw in, or they often like to throw in like a little stealthy, sneaky part. Yes. Minish Cap has a very small part like that. Ocarina certainly has the entering the castle part in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Just manageable. 
Manageable, right. Maybe, <laughs> I, I think I remember the first version of that silent realm where you can't be seen and it oh, was my terrifying. Goodness. I honestly, last time I played and for whenever I, we play this again for a review episode, we'll have to just do a walkthrough video because I've had to do it before because I cannot handle it. Okay. <laughs> I can't handle it. And I also, because say you collect like 14 of the 15 or whatever, and then you get killed by an enemy, you have to start all over from scratch in the silent wow. realm. So I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. I yeah. do not need to be doing this all over again because it's stressful. I remember getting caught, but I must have it must have happened earlier where I didn't quite notice that I didn't get all the bees, or at least it didn't bother me. I can't I can't do it. So <laughs> once once and if you complete Din's silent realm, you get the fire shield earring. So that hmm. corresponds back to Din and Seems fire. like Din's the one that shows up a lot. Oh, are we only talking oh, about Din right now? Oh, I got notes for everybody. Okay, okay. We're just doing uh, Din yeah, right now? Din. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. I, and it's probably the easiest one to do, it's too. Fire. Cause fire it's fire element. Cur- or not courage. It's power and fire and yeah. red and, you know, probably easiest to manifest in I'm different sure. ways. Mm-hmm. And obviously, this is the one that Ganon or Ganondorf, whoever it is oh. in the game of choice, ends up with. Because he, you oh, know, whoever cool. touches the Triforce gets the part of it that corresponds most to what they want. Yeah. And so he wants power the most. So he, he always has the power. Triforce. I like this. I like how this is all lining up. I've always found it fascinating. I like it. It kind of makes a game that might seem at times kind of uh, n- nebulous in terms of like, why am I doing this? And what is the story? Mm-hmm. It really like has everything start to make sense. You know, we've joked in other episodes how, how you've said like, oh, I wouldn't even think about how that polygon's rendered on that thing or whatever. And I have to confess for me, I'll joke about myself right now and say like, I think there's a lot of times in these games where I'm just like, well, that worked. Thanks, Milo. Thanks, Milo. He's literally knocking over a chess set right now. Yeah, he he does whatever he wants to do. Um, I feel like... um. For me, sometimes kind of like, well, that word sounds like that word. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think sometimes I may not pay full attention. And it's just, I get it. I, so it's nice to be learning some of these things. I'm all about the story, man. Mm-hmm. So that's all I have for Din. Um, and then we move on to Nehru, who is my homegirl. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's Nehru. the one I always uh, identified with the most, I guess. The goddess of wisdom because I'm very intelligent. Okay. No. Um, just because... And that's probably Zelda, I'm going to guess. Uh, yes. In the Triforce Correct. representation. Yep. So Zelda gets the Triforce of Wisdom. Um, and yeah, I always liked her a lot. Uh, my friend and I, way back in the day, were discussing getting uh, blacklight tattoos. And you would get Furor? And I was going... Uh, Nehru. Nehru, I was gonna sorry, get sorry, Yeah, sorry. The, so I was going to get the Triforce of Wisdom, which would have just been a triangle, honestly. But whatever. <laughs> so but that was the one that I was going to get. <laughs> or what you do is you get the Triforce... Triangle as the tattoo, and then the black light one is the her little wavy symbol or something. Oh, me? oh, that would have been okay. No, that would have been a better idea. <laughs> but that was the one that I was gonna get because I don't know. That's the one I like the most. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so again, she's the one that established the law and the order, and because I'm obsessed with order, that's also why I identified wow. with her. I was like, I feel you, girl. That's probably what I would have done. This is cool. Um, so her, uh power or ability or item or whatever you want to call it in Ocarina of Time, which we kind of mentioned before is Nehru's love. Yeah. And how is that expressed? Is that the blue thing that shoots straight up? I can't remember. So that's the one that, okay. So it prevents damage. It's basically a shield Yeah, and I never used it. And I probably, I wrote, I probably should have used that one more often. Mm -hmm. I think I forgot about it maybe because I was so used to using the fire one to attack. I'm always, in a lot of games, I'm more focused on attacking than shielding or blocking. Right, I'm sure. just kind of like a button smasher when it comes to that. Sure. I'm just like, fight, 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 fight. So when we get to Adventures of Link, Zelda 2, we're both going to have a hard time, but you're going to have a specifically hard time then oh, in that great. case. Oh, great. I can't so wait. So when we get into that, just remember that. Like You might have to kind of shift your uh, paradigm for that one. Blocking. Yeah. I. It's all about blocking in Zelda 2, but anyway. Okay. Yeah. I, I do that in all of my games. I'm never playing on the defensive. I'm always on the offensive. Cool. So yeah, yeah so I don't remember the animation for the for Nehru's I love. I honestly though. don't either. I always used the Ferora one, which I'm sure we'll get to, which mm-hmm. helps you trans teleport around in the dungeons, which I've spoken about already, mm-hmm. and then the fire one, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So hmm. I don't know. Increases a lot. your defense. It makes sense as far as like a mechanic. But, you know, how is that wisdom related? I'm sure with this one, that's a little more kind of 
not a concrete thing. So it's like, well, how do I express wisdom and like a power, you know? Yeah, I mean, or an I ability. Like defense lines up with that. Um, being you know smart about I suppose something and honestly when you think about it so then because that's with Zelda she's the one that's like isn't she providing some kind of shield for Link Oftentimes. later on so yeah that that actually corresponds with that now mm-hmm. that I'm thinking about it and then um, Link's courage that leads up too I know we're, I don't yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. jump yet but yeah um. So then the, the the lamest version of her <laughs> is in Wind Waker with Nehru's pearl and that you get by doing nothing. Nothing. <laughs> by going to an island that, hey, I have a correction about our Wind Waker episode. I said that the two t- temples were going to be under the earth and wind temples or whatever it was. You mm-hmm. might remember. I was like, that's where it's going to be. I actually have since learned that that water island that's all broken up. Mm-hmm really was going to be another temple. There was going to be a water temple there. Um, and that's and that's and when that didn't work, they just quickly created some geometry of a broken island. They threw Jaboon in the back of Outset because Outset already existed. Mm-hmm. And so that was definitely one of the places where one of the dungeons was going to be. It wasn't necessarily the locations I was talking about. But anyway. Gotcha. Gotcha. But um, yeah, yeah, getting that, so getting that Jaboon, Nehru uh, gem. Nehru's pearl, yeah. Nehru's pearl. was so, such a bummer because... Uh, yeah, so you have to, okay, fine. You have to get in there. You have to bomb the wall down yeah, in right. your uh, uh, tidal, whirlpool yeah. kind of thing. I almost said tidal wave. <laughs> whirlpool. <laughs> Same thing. Um, but then, yeah, he, he's like, they talk between ja, uh, Jaboon and the the uh, red dragon boat lion. Yeah. <laughs> lion so, dragon boat. Right. <laughs> um, talk to each other. King of red lions. Yes. And they're like, okay, take this pearl. Okay, great. And then it, that's yeah, that's it. true. It's true. And and I remember writing my notes when I was playing that game, and I was like, really? That's it. Nehru. I don't know. Like I played this game before, but I guess I didn't remember how anticlimactic that part was. So, again, what that has to do with wisdom? Not not sure. Not sure. Um, Man, what association wish... that has? Yeah. Um, you get to Skyward Sword, and so that's yet another song that you have to learn. Right. Um, yet another sacred realm that you have to complete. That one you get claw shots. Okay. Because that is wis- wisdom related. Yeah. Interesting. Um, this is definitely the one that's just like, huh? Now these sacred this realms, that- if we're doing canon or if we're doing timeline, this is these kinds of sacred realms are happening first, even before um, like all the pearls and the gems and stuff. I su- yeah, I anyway, suppose they would. Just point that out. Yeah. I just know I don't like them, so I try not to think about them. What is, what is them? Oh, the, <laughs> the sacred. The sacred r- yeah. the, because they're so dang hard. Yeah. Um, well, it's a little bit of that Zelda at, at its weakest. It's because it's like, hey, we're just click, click and repeat, you know, like copy paste. I don't know, rinse, repeat, whatever the expression exactly. should be. Right. Just give it a new filter and do that. Um, sometimes that's cool, but most of the time, it's, it's you can see through the seams and the cracks immediately. It doesn't quite that work. Kind of and then yeah. you stop having fun. Yeah, and especially those where it's like one hit. That's the other thing. One hit, you're dead. It's not just like an enemy can't see you it's also as soon as they touch you you're dead yeah yeah i think that yes you're right and that's an entire section and i think when it's things like hyrule castle or even it's technically it's hyrule castle and minish cap as well they're little you know oh quick little bursts and okay fun Mm -hmm. you know oh i think you do some sneaking in in majora's mask too into the deku castle you have to do some sneaking which i don't mind kind of fun i'm kind of uh, i don't know Sneaking Kinda is fun. Kind of eh on stealth and sneaking. Yeah. Um, I certainly employed it much more in Breath of the Wild. I like but in Breath of the Wild, it's a robust system that you right. can actually, like, you know what. So here's the thing why sneaking sometimes is bad. Because you're kind of like, well, what what is actually, how did the programmers do this? Is it when the little white light touches me? Or is it like just, mm-hmm. is it actual line of sight? Breath of the Wild, it's an entire system that is consistent much less rest- restricted right and it's yeah right okay anyway yeah. i almost started a rant on that <laughs> but yes so yeah. sneaking's great when it's great <laughs> when it's touche um so and then the sacred realms too when you hit it, not only would you get caught if like you're seen by something but then if you walk through the wrong like there's a glowy substance on the ground and if you touch yeah. that that's all oof yeah that's right oh uh, wow that's yeah, right that's terrible so uh <laughs> and then you get um in skyward sword as well you get once you learn the song you get the sacred flame for Nehru, which is it enhances your dowsing abilities so mm. your ability to find i think rupees and it gives you a couple mm. other things that you can douse for sure um 
And then, uh, as we kind of mentioned before, Oracle of Ages would be Nehru. So, um, who I read. Oh, again, Ages was Nehru. Right. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Who, again, I, I read and I haven't played. So, Nehru is possessed by someone who wants to travel to the past and kind of... It's, well, that's Vadi again. Yeah. yeah. So, all yeah. related to that. So, I guess I guess Nehru is possessed and then she, she gets saved and then... She's also just expressed as like a normal humanoid okay. person. In that. Both, both those games, you know, they are kind of parallel experiences that mm-hmm. are a little different. I think I'm finding that I'm liking seasons more than ages, but I thought I would like ages. I originally bought ages back when I was in college when the games came out. And, um, cause I thought like, Ooh, time travel. I love time travel puzzles. That'll be cool. And then I was like, season puzzles. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, but I've actually come to really enjoy seasons the little bit that I've played of it so far. See, I would have been intrigued by the seasons thing because they've done the time travel before. It's true. Several times. It's true. And, I, you know, maybe it's just like, it's just the back to the future lover in me and just like any of that. So oh, I sure. can like, I love like, I oh, if that does that, I, I think I can track this logic. But what I've learned with seasons, if I may, is that it's like, it's kind of cool. It's like, oh, well, lakes freeze over in the winter or uh, mm. trees in the fall. You can walk through certain tree tree beds that are uh, decrepit, you know, that don't have all the leaves on them or something. Oh, you can actually cool. pass through things. And it's been kind of neat. But anyway. Awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I just had to read about them. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't even know they were in those Nehru games. and Din, and you might remember the Oracle series was originally going to be three games, mm-hmm. and I bet you uh, Furore would have been the other dancer, the other humanoid. So who we're getting to next. Perfect sure. transition. Sounds Perfect good. segue. Um, oh, of Absolutely course. And then so, it. oh yeah, we discussed how Nehru is Zelda. So um, so Furore would be the goddess of courage. Green would be the associated color, of course. Well, that lines up. Link. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And Interesting. His, his favorite color is green. <laughs> um, so that one gets entrusted to Link. Um, so again, Furore was the source of all the life, um, the vegetation, the animals, the humanish things, the actual yeah, 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 the humans. humanish things. Yeah, the humanish things. Um, in Ocarina of Time, that one was Furore's Wind, which you talked about. You used it. Um, that one allows mm-hmm. Link to basically return to the entry point of the dungeon or any place in the dungeon too, so any, right? ro- any room you're in you can put a little beacon at the door yeah and it, it's 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 like a it's like a yeah you can put a beacon at the door and then also at the entrance of the dungeon so then you can go back there yeah uh but essentially it lets you it lets you teleport out of a dungeon essentially and then when you go back into a dungeon it lets you teleport to where you left off which gotcha. is handy so you use it i never i used, used it that. often because it would be like oh need more arrows you know, then oh. I would just warp out of the dungeon, yeah. go buy some, and then come back to the dungeon and warp right back to where I left off. Huh. I never once used it. It was handy. But then I can't remember ever using this Ferrara one. The, the you mean the Nehru sorry, one? Sorry, Nehru. I don't know why I keep <laughs> swapping those two. It's easy to, I'm looking at a piece of paper, like literally every time I say one of their names, I have to <laughs> glance down and be like, okay, I'm talking about the right one. Because yeah, Din is easy enough to remember, but. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and you you get the same thing with this whole Ferrora's Wind with in Twilight Princess with the ook 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 however you say it. Oh, the weird chicken thing. The, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's kind the of the same. The lady chickens. Yes, so that kind of is the same concept where you could warp. It is. It's the there. same execution. Yep. yep. Um, but again, something I never used in Twilight Princess. I don't know. I was hmm. like. I use it often. I don't. I think whenever I get into one of those dungeons or temples or what have you, I just kind of want to do it. I just want to mm. get through it because I care more about like the the story and the. I want to say exploring, even though that doesn't sound like me at all. But kind of the more <laughs> like getting to the place, and then once I get to the dungeon, I just kind of want to knock it out. Fair enough. So I don't. I'm it's like, nice to wrap your head around like the bigger puzzles in the dungeons. Yeah. Once in a while, I'll peace out and go get some stuff and come back. I think also I, I don't often have like a lot of time to play. Yeah, like sure. I'm kind of, you know, I only have a couple, like an hour or something yep. to play video games right now. So I'm like, just go, go, go. Like, don't even bother yeah. warping out and coming back. Cause that I was hear time. You. I hear you. I just, you know, I just like pause and save and whatever, but yeah. Oh, sure. Totally. Oh yeah. No, I wouldn't be able to like pause and save and quit oh, in the middle of a dungeon. Absolutely. Like if I started one, oh, I really? gotta finish it. Oh, I'll easily play a dungeon for a week and a half in 15 what? minute segments. Oh no. Because I you know, again, it's like that's all the time you have for it. it's like a cup of coffee, yeah. fifteen minutes. No, I have to get like in, get out. Set us. You know, I have to be like, I am ready for video game time now. <laughs> like I have an hour. I see. I have enough time for this because yeah, I don't like to. I have really bad like short term memory. Mm. So if if I wait, so by that logic, maybe breaking it up would help because then you'd have long term. I'm just joking. No, 
I know it's okay. You're wrong. I was stretching. You're absolutely wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so yeah, short time. You just mean like, oh, where was where was that where room? Where was I? Thing what have I done whatever? already? Where do I go next? Yeah. And it's it's almost like having played them already makes that more difficult because, because you kind of like, did I already do that room or not? Exactly. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, so no warpy for me. Fair enough. Um. Yes. So let's see. Do do do. Ocarina and then Wind Waker. After so this the that There's pearl is the one you get after rescuing. M- Makar, Makar, the yeah, little yeah. little guy. So you actually um, probably get that one second in Wind Waker. Yeah, you do, of course. From yeah, for from the uh-huh. Forbidden Woods. Yep. So you have to go in there, um, and that makes sense because green mm-hmm. is the associated color. Red, green, blue. Um, so that one is another one for some. I don't know why. I, I think you said they were running out of time when they were Wind Waker. Yeah, with Wind Waker. Why they didn't have a water temple? Yeah. Yes. So it's it's odd that you only really have to like do a significant amount of work to get two of the three pearls and the third one they're like (laughs) it's true it's true so yeah that they just make you sail a little bit more a little more sense um i also can't i just recalled that of course you get red green and blue gems from the deku tree the dodongo cavern and then well essentially from the kakiri forest the gorons and the zoras yep and those, I'm sure, I don't remember the names of them, but I'm sure they represent courage and whatever, and perhaps even also the goddesses. It, yeah, it was the Goron's ruby, which didn't really... Mm. Um, and then it, there were kind of more jewels, I think. I yeah. remember that the emerald, the ruby, and the sapphire was oh, what they were. Oh, yes, 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 but, yes, yes. But I mean, they are red, green, blue. Obviously, for mm-hmm. a reason. Yeah, that, that's... I'm, Pretty sure that's not just a coincidence. Right. So, yeah, that's another way that they're brought... I didn't even think of that, about that. RGB. Yeah. Um, Furore's uh, Courage, um, that's the Skyward Sword song. Um, mm-hmm. There's that Sacred Realm as well, of course, where you get the Water Dragons scale shrug. <laughs> okay. I don't know that one. how that one relates as well to... Oh, the- right. But doesn't the scale help you do the... The little jumps, the crazy jumps, or is that Twilight Prince? No, I think that is Skyward. I'm trying to remember. To jump over, when you're going up Zora's River, you can do the the spin jumps and like do a dolphin jump out of the water. And maybe that is not the case. I don't remember. There's so many, there's like so many scales and like Breath of the Wild and stuff (laughs) that like I don't even know what all of them do. It is a little easy to lose track. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, And then, well, with Skyward, it's so hard because of the repeats. It's like, wait, was that the third time I was there or the second time I was there that I got that thing? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, And then that sacred flame lengthens the sword, which that would could that would make sense for courage. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. sword's longer. <laughs> cool. So I'm more brave. I don't know. I'm 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 four inches more brave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. And then so what I read with the oracle part was that Ferrar is the oracle of secrets. Okay. Which um helps Link obtain rare items. Does Maybe. that sound right to you? Like it could have been seasons, ages, and secrets, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I've never heard. That's what, what that I third found on the interwebs. Oh, I saw. So I thought secrets was when the two other games were like combined or played to because they're two separate games, but with their own yeah, their own storylines, their own thing. Um, but, but you, you can, can link them together with a game cable and share a few things. So I think maybe that's, that's where that's how they represented it. The secrets then. comes in. I'm sure that in the, when they were going to make three, it was going to be based on the Triforce. So by today's uh, episode, we are deducing that it was also then probably going to be represented by the goddesses, mm-hmm. which we can see is through Din and Nehru. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that third game would have been Furor. And then when they decided to only make two instead of three games, they probably, yeah, attached Furor to the link cable. Part. I think they did. I think that's where it came yeah. from. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, kind of like a. Eh. Mm-hmm. There've been a couple of times, obviously, and this that was ambitious where... for Capcom to try to make three games at once. I think two was perfectly fine, and they're both good games. So cool. Again, I'm looking forward to playing those ones because I remember kind of when did those come out? Remind me. So they were they were the next ones after Ocarina, and I think I think release order they actually precede Majora's Mask, but it was right around that time, late '90s, early 2000s. I don't know how I missed. Mid early maybe two thousand one two thousand two kind of thing. Those are Game Boy games, right? Game Boy Color specifically. Game Boy Co- yeah. yeah, and I had a Game Boy Color. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why did I miss that? Um, I don't know, but I do think they came out very late in the Game Boy Color cycle because I actually played them on my white Game Boy Advance. I bought the Oracle of Ages and a Game like, Boy Advance from too. a physical brick and mortar store. Mm-hmm. Walked home and clicked it into my Game Boy Advance. Did, maybe the the level of marketing just was not suitable because I didn't even I remember hearing about those games later, but yeah. not when they came out. Like so they, well, they were. 
I think in this day and age, I think these days they're respected as full Zelda games. But when they did first come out, remember it was Capcom making them kind of with Nintendo's permission. Mm-hmm. So maybe there was a little less branding for it maybe. or uh, marketing for it or yeah. something. I do remember they. I kind of knew just from video game magazines, and then I remember just seeing them on the shelf at like a Best Buy in Chicago. I was living in Chicago back then, actually. Oh, full circle. Full circle. How weird. So those were like the main notes that I had for That's each. Great goddess and kind of how they they pop up so um but if there's something that i missed which there probably is or if you guys have seen like a mention of them a tribute in some kind of even like the tiniest little detail Mm -hmm. let us know like give us feedback you can post on or take us how how do you work twitter how do you do the twitter tweet at us (laughs) you can tweet us you You can can take us home take us on on twitter um but yeah tweet at us or leave a comment on Uh the youtube version of this episode and let me know what i missed because i'm sure I missed Twitter something. is Twitter is another Zelda pod. Yep. Instagram's another Zelda podcast. I lose track of them, so I like you to go over yeah. those because I don't remember what's pod and what's Yeah, podcast. Twitter's the short one, Instagram's the longer one. Okay. That's what I what I finally like realized. I have already forgotten that. Um um, yeah, that's great. If people want to reach out to us on Facebook and leave us Facebook messages, that's yeah. awesome. Facebook Messenger is kind of cool in that you can create a dialogue, but you can do that on Instagram as well. Sure. But that's technically just Facebook databases anyway. Anyway, I digress. So uh, talk to us. What did I miss? What do you like? What have you seen? Mm-hmm. All that good stuff. Is there like, uh, I'm sure there's other name references that are hidden in there. I'm sure that both of us would have. I would imagine <laughs> that these characters appearing in non-canonical experiences, though, might be rare. Whereas like a Goron or something like we said two weeks ago, four weeks ago. Is likely to you know maybe you know easy shows to up appear in, in another Hyrule cart racing times or whatever. Well, actually, sure. if there was a Zelda racing game, maybe uh, maybe one of the goddesses would be in there. There would be all three, <laughs> and they'd have different abilities. Oh, there's mm-hmm. so much potential, man. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's all I got for now. So that's I cool. We're going to uh, we're going to wrap it up and say see you next time. Indeed, which indeed. I'm not exactly sure what our next episode will be. Oh, uh, we don't know. It, it, Minish Cap is coming up on the slate, but maybe we'll mm-hmm. take a little more time because I don't want you to rush that one. And I know that you've been very, very busy lately. So maybe we'll we'll still decide. We'll, may, maybe Minish Cap will be towards the end of the season, or save it for next season. Yeah, I, we shall see. Right. Um, but if people have, if you're listening, and you have ideas on things you'd like for us to talk about. Certainly, we're kind of doing our staples of going through the different kinds of dungeons, going through the different kinds of characters, different kinds of favorite things. Game reviews and, uh-huh. and whatnot, but we could always use more ideas. Absolutely. All right. Um, so, oh yeah, social medias. I think we did it. On Just the a in- minute or two ago. Oh, for actual, for actual show. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, people can find me. I know you were just about to say my name. I'm sorry. Um, people can find me, David Geisler, on Twitter and Instagram at Raptor Paint. And I am on Instagram at I Only Take Cat Picks. So check us out. Marvelous. Uh, Kate, we'll see. Uh, I'll see you next week. I'll be hosting, and I don't know what we're talking about yet. Or in two weeks. Okay, bye. There it is. <laughs>